Uh, inshallah, today we'll just briefly go over some of the benefits of Surah Qaf that uh, I just recited in Salat al-Fajr. Uh, it is a uh, surah that the Prophet would regularly recite. Uh, in fact, uh, it is narrated that he would recite it so frequently in the khutbas that in fact some of the sahaba memorized surah qaf simply by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reading it so he would read surah qaf like a khutbah he would literally take surah, al- surah qaf and just use it as a khutbah and he would do it in a number of times so many times that some of the sahaba memorized it by listening to the entire surah in the khutbah also he would frequently use it sometimes for fajr sometimes for eid so surah qaf is one of the surahs that are constantly recited by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also surah qaf is one of the markers of the quran meaning the quran ha- has been divided into five sections you have the long surahs you have the mi'at surahs you have the uh, mathani you have the different sections sections in a famous hadith and the final section it is called the mufassal and the mufassal begins from surah qaf to surah nas and the mufassal surahs are called mufassal because mufassal means those with breaks in other words the surahs are so short that the quran is broken up into the small surahs so we call them qisara sur in in modern vernacular small surahs right uh, the short surahs and the short surahs the mufassal begins with surah qaf so technically, from Surah Qaf to Surah Nas, this is the Mufassal. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I have been blessed by the other Prophets by being given the Mufassal. None of the other Prophets were given these Mufassal. And also, from the Seerah we learn, generally speaking, when the Prophet led the Salawat, he would re- recite from the Mufassal, generally. And he, when he was doing private, he would recite from the longer Surahs, right? General, of course, no, no problem if we recite from any section, but the default Surah, Sunnah is that the Prophet Sallallahu would recite from the uh, Mufassal. Now Surah Qaf is an early Meccan Surah. And like early Meccan Surah, it demonstrates some of the key characteristics of that Surah. Of them is sh- short ayat. This is a common characteristic. Of them is beginning by the Huruf Al-Muqatta'at. Qaf, Haam, Meem, Alif, Lam, Meem. Anytime a Surah begins with the Muqatta'at, the default is, there's one or two exceptions, the default is that it is a Meccan uh, Surah. Of them is that the Qasam is common in the Meccan Surah. So the Qasam, when Allah gives an oath, it is from the Meccan Surah. Generally, the Madani Surahs do not have the uh, Qasam. And so, of them, the themes as well. The Meccan Surah concentrates on the broad aspects of theology, Iman. Whereas the Madani Surahs is more into the stories, and it is more into the laws and ahkam. So when you look at the this Surah, Surah Qaf, it exemplifies, it embodies all of the characteristics of the early Meccan surahs. And the theme of Surah Qaf is very simple. Throughout the entire surah, it is one primary theme and then one secondary theme. The primary theme, it is to prove that there will be resurrection. There will be bath. There will be coming back and another life after this life. And of course, the secondary and the tertiary, there's always these three, almost all, in all Meccan surahs, is the risala of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi proving it and to uh, mention the status of the Quran and of course it is a package deal like Risala and Quran are the same thing because what is a Rasul he has been one who has been sent with Wahi so to emphasize the status of the Prophet and to emphasize the reality and the blessings of Wahi these are the secondary and tertiary concepts of the surah and very quickly going over some of the main uh, concepts of it Qaf wal Quran al Majid and of course you know that these Letters, Huruf al muqatta'at you know that there's so many opinions about them. Allahu alam, which one is the correct one? But one thing we notice about all of these letters Alif, Lam, Mim, Hamim, Noon, Yasin. One thing we notice is that every single time Allah mentions these letters, the very next verse mentions the Quran. This is a constant theme throughout the whole Quran, right? Hamim wal Kitab al Mubin. Yasin wal Quran al Hakim. Noon wal Qalami wa Ma'asturun. Again, this is about writing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Alif Lam Mim, Dharik al Kitab la Rayba fi. Qaf wal Quran al Majid. So always Allah mentions the Quran about the Wahi whenever He mentions these huruf or these letters. Wal Quran al Majid, the glorious Quran. It is a Quran of grandeur, a Quran of majesty. Allah Allah gives a qasam by the Quran. بَلْ عَجِبُوا أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ وَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا شَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ They were amazed. How can a messenger come? And the kuffar said, this is something that is preposterous, something weird. What is, what, what is so weird about this? أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيدٌ Are you saying when we 
we die and when we become dust, we're going to be resurrected. This is a preposterous return. You really think we're going to come back once our bones have decayed, once our flesh has become dust. You, you want us to believe this? So this sets up the whole surah. Right from the beginning, we get the main theme that the Quraysh and the people upon whom the Quran has been revealed have rejected the concept of ba'th, the concept of the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ We know what the earth will take from their bodies. You're not telling us, we know what's going to happen to your bodies. You're not going to teach us the reality of death. قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ We know all that the earth will take from the flesh and blood that you have. And وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حفيظ. And all of this is written in a book that is protected. In other words, we are the ones who decided this. And we are the ones who know. And all of this is predetermined. And we are the ones who have sent down these laws and these rules. And we know down to the molecule how much is going to be decayed and what will happen. And not only do we know it, we have written it down. All of this is in a kitab, Hafiz. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to refute. And Surah Qaf uses some of the primary mechanisms the Quran uses to prove the day of judgment. To prove the ba'th and qiyamah. So, they are not just denying the day of judgment. They're denying the ultimate truth. And this shows us when you deny one aspect of Islam, you deny all of Islam. When you deny one reality, you deny all of realities. So Allah says they're not just rejecting Qiyamah, they are rejecting the entirety of the truth. And when you reject the truth, you are left. Amrim Marij is a matter of doubt. You are in a state of doubt. Anybody who rejects religion shall be in a state of shak, in a state of doubt. Only the person of religion is in yaqeen. Those who don't have iman, agnostic, atheist, kafir, they're always wondering, am I right? Am I wrong? None of them have yaqeen, even if their tongue says they have yaqeen. Their hearts are going to be balhum fi shakkin. They're always going to be in a vacillation because they don't have the truth. Only the person of Iman has yaqeen in the heart. The person of Iman has a sense of sakina. I know the meaning of life. I know life and death. I know what's going to happen after death. I know who created me. That sense of peace only comes from Iman. When you don't have Iman, then the net result is fahum fi amrim marij. They're always going to be in doubt. And alhamdulillah, most of us here are born Muslim. We don't understand this reality. Talk to any convert. Talk to anybody who has from kufr accepted Islam. Wallahi, we do not appreciate one of the simplest blessings of Islam and that is to know why we are here and to know who created us and to know the purpose of life. These big questions, can you imagine if you didn't have answers to them? Can you imagine if you didn't know for sure, is there a God, is there not a God? What would be the impact on your life? This is what Allah is saying. Allah is mentioning the reality when you reject Allah, and you reject religion, and you reject the akhirah, your hearts are always going to be in doubt and shak. You're never going to find peace. Then Allah says that, Now Allah brings a number of techniques. I'm going to go over these quickly. The first technique in this surah is, how can you doubt day of judgment and qiyamah? How can you doubt resurrection when the world around you demonstrates my power? What is so miraculous about bringing life back when I have created life in the beginning? So the Quran says, أَفَلَمْ يَنظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ Can't they see the heavens above them? كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا How we have perfected and, and, and constructed it. وَزَيَّنَّاهَا We have beautified it, right? وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوشِ There's not a single flaw. Open your eyes. Look at the constellations. Look at the stars. Look at the majesty of creation. And how can you doubt that we have then the power to bring you back? And then from the heavens, bring your eyes down. From the heavens, bring your eyes down and look at the world around you. The earth, we have spread it out flat. Look at how large and vast the earth it is. We have put these mountains and valleys and we have made all of these green, lush cultivations and plants. This is because it's a call for you to think 
about. It is a tabsira for you to ponder. And it is a dhikra, something that's going to re- recall your intellectual uh, capabilities. لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ مُنِيبٍ وَنَزَّلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا And another constant theme of the Qur'an, rain. Rain. Allah is saying the cycle of rain, where is it coming from? From Allah. The one who can do that can also bring about life again. And especially, again, we live in mashallah in a, a lush land, but anybody who lives in a dry area, you will see for yourself when rain falls, a completely dry piece of land becomes vibrant again. When rain falls, you would think this is a lost plot. It's not going to work. Nothing's going to happen. But after rain falls, it becomes lush and green. And I've seen this multiple times when I was in Medina, that this ayah really, you understand it when you see it. We are in a very green area on earth, so we're not, we're not accustomed to this. But the reality is, wallahi, it is a miracle to see when rain comes down to a dry land, you thought it's a dead desert. And that dead desert, it comes back blue it comes back with vegetation for weeks and months because of one downfall, one torrent that comes. So Allah is saying, you know that I can do this to dead land. You've seen it with your eyes. Don't you understand? I can do this to dead bodies as well. The one who can do this to a land that you thought was completely barren is the one that can bring back life as well. And then, so this is another technique and that is the rain. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, the reality of past nations. كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ وَأَصْحَابُ الرَّسِّ وَثَمُودِ وَعَادٌ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوطِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَةِ وَقَوْمُ تُبَّعَ Allah mentions eight civilizations. This is another technique of the Qur'an. And that's history. Who are you, O Quraysh, to think that you are special? You think you're the first that denied? You know for a fact previous civilizations and they are no longer here. You pass by their dwellings. Do you not learn from history? Do you not see they were a mighty civilization and they are no longer here? Do you think you will be any different? And Allah mentions a number of them that are unique to the Arabs. So for example, Qawmu Tubba is a uh, uh, obscure reference because it's a rare reference only twice in the Quran. Who is Qawmu Tubba? Tubba was a king of Yemen. Some of them, you know, Qawm Lut, Ashab Lut, you know, Fir'aun, you know. But a number of them are a bit obscure. In other words, there's ikhtilaf over who they are. Ashab al-Ras, for example. Some, some people say this is the people of uh, Shu'ayb. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, wa Ashab al-Aykati, wa Qawm Tubba'. Qawm Tubba, as we said, Tubba is a king of Yemen. And there is a hadith is disputed if, if it's authentic or not. The Prophet ﷺ allegedly said it's in Muslim and Muhammad, so it's a, uh, Isnad has some controversy. The Prophet ﷺ said it is, it is reported that he said, I don't know whether Tubba was a prophet or a king. I don't know which of the two. Was he a prophet or only a king? Because Tubba was a king. Was he also a prophet king or not? So there is a, a hadith like this, Wallahu alam, is authentic or not? There's a controversy over it. Uh, and we do not know actually to this day, was Tubba one of the prophets or is he just mentioned by name in the Quran like this? But Tubba was a king of Yemen, one of the ancient kings of Yemen. And he was one of those who established a mighty civilization and the Arabs were well aware of this. So Allah is saying, O people of Quraysh, learn from history. You are not the only one that has denied the day of judgment. And then Allah says, Do you think the first creation made us tired? All of this I've shown you. All, I've shown you the heavens, the earth. I've shown you the vegetation. I've talked to you about previous generations. Do you think... Once we've done all of this, we're not able to do it again. Did the first creation make us tired so that now we cannot do it all over again? No. Rather, the arrogance is on you and you are rejecting the reality. Then another technique of the Quran to prove the day of judgment, to describe the day of judgment in vivid detail, to describe it scene by scene, play by play. So Allah then begins to talk about the actual day of judgment. Of course, Allah begins in this world and He's going to make His way to the day of judgment. Allah begins where we are right now. We created man. And we know exactly the thoughts that you have. O Quraysh, we know your thoughts inside out. And we are closer to you than your jugular vein. The famous verse over here. Know, O Quraysh, that you have two angels. 
right and left. They are sitting always over there. يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ They are writing down all that needs to be written down. مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ Not a single قول, not a single phrase comes from their, them. إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Now, here, some people misunderstand رَقِيب and عَتِيد are the names of the angels. No. رَقِيب is ever-present. عَتِيد is writing meticulously. These are adjectives, not nouns, right? So this is not the name رَقِيب and عَتِيد. These are adjectives. مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيد Not a single قول that he says, except that somebody that is meticulous, and somebody that is ever present, these are the angels, are going to write it down. Now from this, by the way, we learn an important fact, and that is, the angels do not write your thoughts. The angels write your actions. مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ And this is something Allah has blessed us with, that Allah says, تَجَاوَزْتُ I have overlooked what you think about. This is in the, uh, the hadith. Allah subha- the, the Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have overlooked the sins that you think about, the evil that you have in your own minds. But overlooking doesn't mean Allah does not know. But what is kitabah done? This is, you see the contrast here. In the beginning of this verse, Allah says, we know your thoughts. Then Allah says, but I'm not going to write them down. We're going to write down. What are we going to write down? مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ any and qawl is of course the least of actions. So if a qawl is written, then obviously an amal will also be written because qawl is the lowest category of amal. So we, from this we learn, Allah is aware of our thoughts, but Allah is not going to call us to task for them. Allah will cause us to task for our actions. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins the journey in our lives from this world to the next. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ وَنُفِقَ فِي الصُّورِ Sorry, وَنُفِقَ فِي الصُّورِ so, uh, No, sorry, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ That the, uh, the pangs of death are going to come. And so the beginning of the journey is there to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in order to cause us to think and reflect the purpose of life. The sakratul maut will happen to all of us. And Allah constantly mentions this reality of death. خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَا You can deny judgment. You cannot deny death. You can deny qiyama. You cannot deny your temporary life in this world. So Allah brings this up. Before that time comes, make sure you know your journey. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ you are trying to run away from death, but death will not run away from you. You are trying to avoid death. Tahid, you wanted to avoid it. Swerve away from it. And Allah says, no. The sakratul maut, the pangs of death are going to come. And then, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدِ Then the trumpet is going to be blown, and this is the promised day. وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ Every soul will come with at least two angels. One of them will be guiding where you need to go, and one of them will be a witness. Now pause here. In the Arabic language, the singular does not negate duality and plurality. In other words, you can mention one and you mean multiple. And the opposite is also true. You can mention two and you mean multiple or one. You can mention multiple and you mean one or two. In other words, the uh, concept of plurality and singularity, there's sometimes an element of balagha. So when Allah says shaheed, it doesn't necessarily mean only one. It could be both of the angels are going to come and they are both shaheed. The meaning is that you are going to be escorted in front of Allah. And there will be a guard and there will be witnesses. There is no escape. And so you're going to come on that day and you're going to have this angel that is in front of you, Sa'iq, and you will have angels that are shaheed, going to bear witness. لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا This is what you were heedless about. You didn't think about this. You didn't contemplate a day would come when you're going to be brought forth in front of your Lord. You were not cognizant now. No doubt, this verse primarily applies to those who deny and reject. But every Muslim should be constantly aware of this verse as well. No doubt, the primary addressee are the Quraysh. But me and you are also going to be brought forth in front of Allah. This is the reality of life and death. And we should also be reflecting what is going to happen when we are escorted. What is going to happen when we have to answer for our lives. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ You were in doubt and ghafla. Today, your vision is clearer than it has ever been. 
and you can see with crystal clarity. This here, it's not a physical veil, it is the veil of the heart. Your heart was clouded, you weren't thinking, now everything is crystal clear. How can it not be when you see with your own eyes? Your vision is 2020. Your vision is crystal clear. The vision is not the eyes, it's the heart. Meaning, once you see everything, your heart will know with certainty that this is all true. And every one of us will come to this level as well. Then, وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ His قَرِين Who is the قَرِين here? Again, some ikhtilaf, but it seems obvious, and this is the majority opinion. The قَرِين here is the same angel that's writing down. The Qareen is the angel. In this verse, Qareen doesn't mean the, the devil. Because we know there's a Qareen that's the devil. In this verse, the Qareen is the angel. And the angel will come. وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ This hisab is what I have prepared for you, O Allah. The accountant, the tax accountant. This is the angel. So the angel is presenting your deeds. And the angel is saying, هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ this is the whole hisab prepared and it is meticulously done. And the verdict will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-qiyah fi jahannam kulla kaffarin anid. So this is the verdict. Throw into jahannam every arrogant kafir. Man na'il lil khayri mu'tadim murib. Three characteristics. Man na'il lil khayr. He's not giving zakah. Man na'il lil khayr. He's stingy. Mu'tad, he's harming other people. Murib, he is in doubt about the day of judgment. So your rituals and your akhlaq and your iman are all referenced over here. And Allah says, the one who's going to be thrown into Jahannam has no rituals, he has no akhlaq, he has no iman. And that's our whole religion is about these three things. Your ibadat, your mu'amalat, and your iman. Hadith of Jibreel as well. So here, مَنْ نَاعِ الْخَيْرِ مُعْتَدِ مُرِيبِ الَّذِي جَعَلَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ فَأَلْقِيَهُ فِي الْعَذَابِ الشَّدِيدِ This is the one who worshipped besides me. Uh, another, and so he's going to be thrown into the fire. Then final, we'll finish up. We're not going to go to the end of the uh, surah. قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ The same angel is going to say, Ya Rabb, I did not do any zulm to him. Why is the angel saying this? Because we learned from the Quran that the kafir will blame. Who is he going to blame? Multiple people. He's going to blame Sadatana wa Kubra'ana, the leaders. He's going to blame his ashab, his friends. And he's going to blame the tax accountant. He's going to blame the angel. He's going to say, This is all a kadib, this is a lie. All of this is not true. The witness, he's going to discredit the witness. So the angel is going to say back, قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَدْغَيْتُهُ Ya Rabb, I didn't do any dhulm to him. He, uh, this is nothing, this is exactly what أَدْغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ Rather, this man was far astray. It's not me, it's on him, right? And Allah will say, لَا تَخْتَصِمُ لَدَيَّ Oh you, don't argue in front of me. Don't bring these ev I know the truth. لا تختصم لدي. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامِ لِلْعَبِيدِ I am not going to do dhulm to my servants. All of these other evidences is for you. As for me, I don't need any of them because Allah is saying, I will never do dhulm. وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامِ لِلْعَبِيدِ Then Allah says, مَا يُبَدَّ الْقَوْلُ ذَيْهِ uh, um, uh, I will, on that day, Jahannam will be asked, are you full? And Jahannam will say, are there yet more to come? There's two opinions about this. Is Jahannam shocked or is Jahannam threatening? Both are valid. Jahannam is shocked. Jahannam is shocked at the quantity. Allah is saying, do you have room for more? And Jahannam is saying, there's still more people coming? In other words, I'm so full and still there's more. Or it is a threat that Jahannam is saying, don't worry, I have space. Either one of them, it is terrifying, whichever one you uh, position you hold, and both of them um, uh, are, are, are permissible. And then it goes on, I don't want to go to the end of it, so uh, about Jannah and how close it is. Uh, uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the tactic of description to prove the Day of Judgment. One final point, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in his famous book, uh, Bada'ir al-Fawa'id, he says, contemplate over Surat Qaf. Contemplate over Surah Qaf. And how you find this letter Qaf constantly recurring in this Surah. And the Surah is built around the letter Qaf. All of the kalimat in it are from Qaf, from the dhikr of the Quran and the khalq and the constant Al-Qawl and Qala. Qala and Qawlu is there. And Qareeb and uh, Talaqqa Al-Malikain and Al-Raqib and Al-Sa'iq. 
and al qarin and al qiya fi jahannam and taqdim and wa'id and al uh, qalb and al qurun and naqabu fil bilad and qabl is mentioned twice in the quran yawma tashaqqaq is mentioned with the qaf as well wa alqayna rawasiya is qaf as well and wa basiqat al nakhl with qaf as well rizq as well al qawm as well huquq as well and on and on and he says and if it were the only benefit of this surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly is using this letter and then he says and this is of course by the way, this is called Tafsir Ishari, which is permissible with some conditions. Ibn Qayyim says, and this letter, it is munasib for this surah because the letter of Qaf is a harsh letter. It is a letter that is distinct and clear. It is a letter that has to be said out loud. So there are characteristics of Arabic letters, right? Qa, that's harsh, guttural. It comes from here. It is Shidda. There is a harshness in it. It is jahr. It is loud over here. There is an element of ulu. It is above the other letters. And he goes, all of this is a reality of the ba'th. The people need to realize. And it is also an indication of the ulu of the Quran. And hence, Surah Qaf begins with the Quran. Qaf wal Quran al Majid. Again, Qaf. And it ends with the Quran. bil Qurani man yakhafu wa'id. Remind them through the Quran if they have any sense of iman and reminding of the Day of Judgment. So, this is the summary of Surah Qaf. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who benefit from the Surah. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون